So my name is Ray Ramirez. Uh, I am a co-founder of Thrive HR Consulting, and uh, we're a consulting firm uh, based here in Denver as well as in Austin. So my, my partner is based out of Austin. So we're going to talk a little bit today about cryptocurrency and why it's important to understand what it is. Uh, some for folks that are very aware of you know the cryptocurrency, there'll be some preliminary slides on kind of what it is and why you know how it works. But really, the focus for me is going to be on why you need to start thinking about this as an organization. Um, and you know, and, and basically, you know, from our perspective, really, it's this is a a way to attract talent and also a way to retain your talent. So no matter what anybody says, it's still a talent war out there. Uh, you know, we're recruiting. You know, part of our business is recruiting. Um, and you know, if you're not you know, offering remote work or hybrid work, you know, don't talk to us. You know, 50, 60 percent of the people won't even talk to you. And then the other thing is, you know, what can you do for me around pay uh, and pay practices? So. Um, so that's why we, we'll talk a little bit today about cryptocurrency. Uh, I will be glad to send you the presentation. We'll have it available. I, I'm not sure it's going to be available on the website. They didn't ask me for it, but if you want a copy of it, I'll be glad to. I've got cards here. You can grab one or just you know, give me your card or, or your contact information, and I'll get you whatever you need. Okay? All right. Cool. All right, so um, what we'll talk about real quickly, you know, why it's important, some of the performance in the last couple of years. Uh, some of it's good, some of it's really ugly. Uh, and then talk a little bit about the employee experience and how to pay employees in crypto, uh, and, then make, and then recommendations, okay? And we want this to be interactive. So if you've got questions, thoughts, whatever, it's all better if we have conversations like that, okay? All right, uh, so the important thing about cryptocurrency is this really is, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. You know, so there's no middleman involved in any of that transaction, okay? Very important, uh, you know, and a lot of, you know, a lot of folks, for whatever reason, um, they feel that this is much more secure, uh, more transparent, and they don't trust trust the banking or the, you know, equity system. Uh, you know, you know, and the reality is, you know, I, I know folks that are bankers, investment bankers. By the time I get a, a tip, it's already been, you know, taken care of. I mean, all the money's already been made. You know, the majority of the time we get tips, it's, it's you know, you may make a little bit of money on it, but not, the, the chances are not going to be great. So that, you know, arbitrage, folks just don't like that. Um, you know, so I think, you know, I think one of the things that I think, Lindsay, you were saying earlier about, you know, the trust in this type of currency by millennials, uh, folks, you know, younger in career is huge compared, you know, to, you know, the current banking system. Okay. A uh, couple of things. Um, you know, you use a, a digital ledger. The best way that it was described to me was kind of a digital ledger is that's you know, carved in stone. So once you carve it in stone, blockchain concept, once you carve it in stone, you can't change it. I mean, it's, it's, it's there, it's, you know, you, it, it's irrefutable. Um, and because of that, the trust in that ledger, is, you know, so that's the concept of the digital currency. Uh, you know, and again, because it is unregulated, you know, there's big peaks and big valleys. And we'll talk a little bit about kind of what those have looked like over the last 24 months. Uh, you know, but the other part too is that, you know, I mean, when you think about the growth expected, and again, you know, five, $5.2 billion by 2026, the value of cryptocurrency, I mean, that's probably low, but it'll probably be higher than that, okay? So again, this is something that we think 
you know, is going to be here. Uh, it's not going away. Um, and if, you know, if your employees, you know, you know, when I, when I, last time I was in, I think we did this presentation um, at a conference in Florida in Orlando a couple of weeks ago, when I said, okay, I had about 100 people in the room, how many of you guys have crypto accounts? You know, 40%, right? There you go, right? <laughs> yeah, folks, folks are, are using it, they've got accounts, they're interested in it. Um, so that's your employee population. You know, so if your competitor offers this and you're not, you know, that's a challenge. Or if you're looking to hire people and, you know, somebody else is offering this as a benefit and you're not, guess where employees may, are more likely to go? You know, so it's really about attracting your talent and retaining your talent. Uh, you know, again, kind of what determines the value? I mean, crypto is just like any other, you know, currency or equity. Um, it's a supply and demand. Uh, the more supply there is, you know, the lower the, you know, the lower the price. The least supply, the higher the price. Um, I think in for Bitcoin as an example, um, there's 19.5 million bitcoins out there. That's it. So it's a finite number of bitcoins. I think you, I think you can go up to like 21 million bitcoins is the is the max. But again, it is a finite, you know, current you know number of bitcoins that are available. So that will drive you know the price. Uh, you know, and again, you know, there's a lot of complexity on how, you know, folks actually, you know, you know how you verify that you are the owner of a Bitcoin or a partial Bitcoin. But the reality is, it is a di it, it's all done digitally. It's all verified through the network, you know, and through the blockchain. Um, so the the chance of there being um, any kind of, you know, uh, somebody changing the value of something is rare or non-existent. Folks can get ripped off and, you know, their, their money stolen, but that's more of a kind of personal, you know, what's your password, what's password? You know, that, you know, doing stuff like that will cause problems to your account, but as far as the security of the, of the, uh, transaction, you know, that's really kind of the way the, the you know, the, the software is written that makes sure that uh, the crypto has value and it is verified. Okay. A uh, couple of things here, you know, it's becoming more common. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but Fidelity, now you can invest your 401k in cryptocurrency through Fidelity. And again, that's if your company offers that as an option. Um, you know, all the maker, major brokerage firms are now offering, you know, are, are trading and, you know, and holding cryptocurrency. Uh, you know, Coinbase is offering a Visa card. Walmart's doing their own crypto. They've announced that. Uh, you've got, you know, earlier, you've got folks being paid in crypto. NFO players, uh, you know, we as a company, you know, one of our one of our consultants who does a lot of, uh, you know, writing and editing of of, doc, of work, we pay him in all cryptocurrency. So we had to figure it out. It's like, well, I, I, you know, if you're not going to talk about it, you better be, figure out how to do it. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so we're and he, that's how he likes to get paid. You know, so you know, there are ways to do it. It's 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 sometimes challenging the first couple of times, but once you've got it done, you know, it's not difficult to do. Not difficult to pay, pay people in crypto. Uh, the other thing too to remember is, you know, who would have thought, you know, 10 years ago that I could send you, you know, money out of my bank account to your phone into your bank account through Zeal um, or other direct payment methods, okay? Uh, you know, who who here has checks that you've used lately? <laughs> I've got checks. I don't think you know. 
I, I think maybe I use them, you know, once or twice a month, you know, and that's when, you know, somebody comes to do something and they want to get paid and, you know, they don't have a, a Zeal account payment check. But again, you know, checks, money orders, cashier's checks, cash, you know, that's just, you know, those are how we used to pay. Now it's become, you know, tap to pay, you know, pay through your phone, you know, direct payment through any, some of these payment apps. You know, all, you know, that, that could have been called, you know, said five years ago, that was crazy. Well, guess what? You know, folks that are saying cryptocurrency and paying through crypto, same concepts are gonna happen. All right, so it's not going anywhere. You know, we've got to figure out how to, how to live with it. Um, some of the biggest issues with cryptocurrency are the environmental challenges with it. Uh, you know, whenever to verify a transaction, it's super, it takes a lot of computing power, okay? Uh, especially with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, just the way it was written, uh, requires a ton of computing power to verify transactions. So as an example, you know, mining cryptocurrency uh, uses the, the same amount of electricity as Argentina uses in one year. So a country. Uh, you know, the other one's interesting, one Bitcoin transaction is equivalent to 700,000 credit card transactions. So those are the challenges with cryptocurrency. The newer currency is a lot more efficient on how it, they've been set up. So they're not at, they don't require as much computing power, but that's one of the challenges with crypto is just the, the computing power required. Yes. Uh, yeah, so the question was, you know, do, do we think that brands will kind of move away from it because of, this, of the impact? I, mean, I don't think so. I, th I think, um, you know, the major credit card holders, the major banks, um, you know, yeah, they, they don't really care a whole lot. I mean, they, they do about the environmental impacts, but at the end of the day, you know, if this is what their consumers are looking for, it's going to be driven by the consumer demand more than anything else. That, that, that's our perspective. <laughs> yeah, they'll go to others that are a little bit, you know, that are better. Yeah, yeah, versus Bitcoin, exactly, versus Bitcoin. Yeah. From a performance perspective, I mean, I can show you the 21 results, which are fantastic. Uh, you know, Bitcoin gold, 191% growth. Uh, you know, Ethereum, 310% growth in 2021. Uh, 2022, or last 12 months, everything is down. Uh, I think today I got you know, something, uh, you know, I think Bitcoin was down like 7% today. So, you know, it, right now, I mean, we're, we're in crypto winter. The other part that's really interesting is a lot of folks thought, well, I'm going to invest in crypto because, you know, it, it, it's not tied to the markets. But what we're finding out is, you know, as the general stock markets go down, for whatever reason, crypto is kind of following, not to the degree, but there's, there's some, you know, it, it, it's kind of going in that direction. Uh, but, you know, and again, the other part of it, too, is, the folks that, that we work with, that we talk to, you know, our writer, you know, they're basically saying we're just acquiring and holding. It's acquire and hold, and it'll come back. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of the feeling that, that a lot of folks have. Okay? Uh, from an employee perspective, you know, we've got a ton of jobs that are still open you know, in the marketplace, uh, you know, trying to find, you know, a full stack developer in the Bay Area is ne next to impossible. Um, I think we were looking for, you know, in the Bay Area, kind of a principal engineer uh, with, you know, certain skill set with a master's degree, you know, and the client was very 
you know, very precise about what they were looking for. You know, we went and did, a, you know, we did some mining of, you know, LinkedIn, and I think in the entire Bay Area there were 10 people, and we had presented two of them. So we're like, okay, there's nobody else. These are the folks, you gotta, you gotta choose one or the, one or the other. Uh, you know, but that's how tough it is out there to find folks. Um, we don't think that's gonna change. Um, there may be some adjustment to the workforce happening, but the reality is some skills are gonna be very difficult to find, some skills are gonna be in high demand, uh, and that's not gonna change over the next several years, or ever, because of, the, of what's required. Uh, you know, we've got a ton of jobs, two, two, jo you know, two jobs are open for every person that's available. You know, so again, folks are still finding work. Somebody who's good, you know, there's, still, there's still roles out there for them. Uh, you know, and f as far as the great resignation, great reprioritization, we really think that COVID has changed the entire ball game of what employees want and what employees expect. Uh, you know, I've got, you know, several friends who were, you know, literally road warriors working, leaving on Sunday, getting back on Thursday with families, uh, you know, working for, you know, top four consulting firms. Guess what? COVID hit, they stopped traveling. Their results were better during COVID than pre-COVID. Guess what? They're not on the road. They're not traveling. They're working from home. They're spending more time with their family, you know, enjoying their family. So, and that's happened throughout the economy. You know, folks do not want to travel. They don't want to come into the office. Uh, you know, you can, you can bribe them with free food. You can bribe them with free alcohol. You can bribe them with free massages. By the way, they're never going to be working because they're going to be either drinking or having a massage. But, you know, it's really, really tough to get folks to kind of change that perspective. Uh, you know, and, and I've got, you know, a very good friend of mine who runs HR uh, for a large organization in uh, Seattle. They just finished uh, construction and opening up their $1.1 billion headquarters when COVID hit. And now he's sitting there going, nobody wants to come into the office. What am I going to do? Okay. And that's happening at Google. That's happening at, you know, every Apple, every other organization out there. Uh, folks don't want to come in. So it's going to be a challenge to hire folks. And employee expectations are really important. So from an attracting employee perspective, from a retaining employee perspective, we think that, you know, looking at paying employees in cryptocurrency is an option for you. Part of your strategy, it's not the only thing, but it's a way to kind of, you know, really start working with your employees uh, and offering something that may be able to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Yeah. Yeah, no, what we're saying is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the reality is, you know, and, and, and we've got a couple of attorneys that we work with, you know, you need to take care of payroll first. Uh, you know, so if somebody's making $100,000 a year, you pay them, you know, 24 times a year, 1 24th of their pay is X, um, I think it's 80, you know, $8,300 or whatever it is. You do your taxes, your deductions, you take care of all of that. And then with the net, that's where we recommend that you offer to move that do those dollars into cryptocurrency. You know, we do not recommend you do the whole thing because, you know, we, we talk about doing, you know, 10, 20 percent, whatever you feel comfortable with of that net because you still want people to be able to pay their rent pay their electricity, pay car payment, all, all the other stuff. The last thing you want to do is, hey, I converted all of my net pay this past month into crypto. Something happened, and I've got nothing. You know, so it's really about, you know, a part of it. And again, make sure that 
you know, you're paying people minimum wage at least, you're paying, you know, all the other rules that you have got to follow from a legal perspective. Uh, you know, again, on the great resignation, you know, there's a ton of data out there that talks about 40% of employees are thinking about changing jobs. Uh, you know, 85% you know, of executives say their turnover is too high and it's going to get worse. Uh, you know, and again, folks are out there looking. I think the data, the last thing I checked was, and this was on Indeed, that how quickly employees start looking on Indeed for another job after their, their hire date is about 30 days. Okay, so 30 days after somebody gets hired, they're starting to look for the next opportunity. So, you know, keeping them engaged, keeping them uh, and retaining them is so important, especially during those, th that initial period. Uh, if, you're, if you're not doing a 100 day, you know, onboarding for your employees, talk to me after this, okay? I mean, I just started, one of our clients here in town just hired a salesperson, took way too damn long to hire a salesperson. But anyway, he's got a 90-day plan. You know, he's being treated, you know, with kid gloves, making sure, you know, benefits are done, payroll's done, you know, and what's, what's gonna, what, what are the expectations, you know, after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days? You know, because that's really important. You don't, you only have a chance to do, you know, to have a really good impression with your new hires once. And if you blow it, even though we had to, you know, figure it out and survive, that's not the way it works anymore. Yeah, you know, so I can I can provide you a template um, on that one. Uh, the other part too is from an employee expectations perspective. You know, folks are looking for, you know, growth opportunity, flexible work, health and well-being. You know. Diversity and inclusion. Yeah, so there's a lot of wants from employees. Uh, at the same time, 67% of millennials think that Bitcoin is safer than gold. Okay. So this is not a you know a nice to do, or this is not something that you know it, you know it'll be great to do it. I, mean, I think it's going to be really important that organizations start to think about this and figure out how how to make it make it work because it you know your employees are looking for it they've got accounts they're out there investing in this today you know, this is no different than anything else that's out there and that's available to them uh, again we think it's a it's a competitive advantage for folks that start doing this uh, we've got a client that's just about to start doing it uh, actually for nurses try to find hire an RN you know in the middle of you know, East Texas, uh, we're, we're going to actually do their signing bonus over two years in Bitcoin. And guess what? If they leave early, they don't get the Bitcoin. They only get whatever they've, you know, uh, whatever accrued or whatever they've earned uh, with vested. You know, so this is happening. You know, this is, this is a, it, you know, it's something that folks need to start thinking about. Yes. Uh huh. Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, and and so it depends. So so, in the example with the signing bonus, the the goal would be I'm going to pay you you know thirty thousand dollars as a signing bonus over two years. Twelve months you get half. At the end of twelve months you get the other half. Well, we'll we'll pay it to you in Bitcoin, but we'll also track it in cash so that after 12 months you decide to leave you know you'll get 50 percent but guess what you know if that bitcoin has grown two or three x you're not going to get that growth until you stick around for the end of the two years so you know the only way you get it is if you stick around till the end of the two years if not you get the cash equivalent yeah right exactly uh huh. So are you 
the way that we're doing it, it's it, it, it's all or you know either cash or Bitcoin, you know, and and you know, the population that's coming in uh, and the kind of the demographics, they're we're thinking they're going to all choose to go crypto. You know. Well, we'll talk about that earlier, but I think it's really important that you work with a reputable, you know, exchange, uh, you know, because there's a lot of them out there that are not what we would call reputable. You know, so working with a Coinbase, or, you know, you know, BitPay, you know, so there's uh, there's some out there that are really really good and they've been around for a while. That's the, really the key is working with the, with with folks that. Um, that are reputable and, and that have been out there for a while versus, you know, the fly-by-night. The ones that end up draining your wallet. <laughs> Be not careful. So how to do it? Uh, you know, we think that a couple of things you should do. One is start to socialize this with your leaders. You know, start having conversations about this. Uh, you know, would they be open to it? You know, can we get a group together, start talking about it? That's really what's important because if you don't, you know, you've got to kind of almost sell it internally with your leaders. From an employee perspective, I guarantee you they're going to be all in. All in, all in. That's not going to be a problem. Where you've got the challenge is with a, you know, 55-year-old CFO, okay, uh, with a CEO who's like, no way, you know, uh, I've got a friend who, you know, lost everything, you know, type of thing, you know. There'll be all those, you know, the stories out there. The reality is figuring out a way to do it, kind of socializing it internally, and then doing it in steps, you know, and, and what we're basically saying is, you know, You've got to run payroll, make sure that that's all done correctly by the book, you know, with your vendor. Then that net is really where you start to carve up part of that into cryptocurrency. Really important. Uh, and also, one of the things that we're seeing and talking to some of our attorneys, which of course our attorneys love having you sign stuff, you know, that's just the nature of the game. Um, they're really they're really recommending that that there is some type of a release from the employee saying, "I understand. I've made the decision to move part of my pay into cryptocurrency, and I am comfortable with the risks and the potential downfalls of that currency." You know, so making sure that it's not a you know there there is something there you know that the employee understands that there is a risk. Uh, and again, using you know, you know, good platforms like Coinbase, BitPay, you know, other platforms that are out there. That's really, really important. Um, you know, and and again, you know, we don't want fraud. We don't want theft. Um, and the way this happens is, you know, if you're just not careful with who you're using. Um, and again, you're going to transfer cash, just like you know, you could put 20% of your pay you know, into a second account through payroll, whether it's Schwab, whether it's Fidelity, you know, instead of Schwab or Fidelity, you're going to Coinbase. And then you let Coinbase know what to do with the funds. Uh, and again, agree to a percent. You could start small, you know, and then increase it as you get more comfortable and as your employees are asking for more. You know, that's really the key is working, you know, working with your you know, if you if you talk to any of your vendors, uh, ADP, you know, we use Paycor for a lot of our clients, uh, paychecks. They're like, no, we're not doing any of that. Not going to happen. So, don't expect any of those vendors to do that. You really have to kind of do it, you know, you know, after the payroll is run. Okay. Uh, and again, yeah, build a plan. Talk about it. Like I said earlier. You know, we figured out how to pay some of our, one of our contractors, you know, using cryptocurrency, and it's working really well. And we also are just, I was actually reviewing a white paper on, crypt, on paying in, on cryptocurrency. Um, so if you'd like a copy of that, I'd, I'd be glad to send it to you. Just let me, give me your, your contact info after, afterwards. 
you know, I mean, the real key takeaways are, you know, one, start talking about this because it's important. It's important from an employee retention perspective. It's important from an employee attraction. Uh, you know, there are table stakes now. You know, if you're not offering a good benefit program, if you're not offering a 401k plan, um, if you're not offering equity, uh, depending on what, what stage you're in, whether you're a startup or established, you know, there are things that, that are becoming more table stakes across the organization. Um, this, we think, is going to become more and more of a table stake as we go. Uh, you know, a lot of organizations, it's interesting, we have a client, uh, you know, they're a medical device company, they've got great products that save lives, but they think that because they offer equity to all their employees, they're unique. Um, I had to be the one to tell their CEO, not the case, here's the data, here's what other companies are doing, and oh, by the way, you know, non-exempts are equity eligible in a lot of companies and, you know, other things. So, you know, lots, lots of times there's some perceptions there within your organizations that you have to figure out a way to break it. Always a good idea to have somebody like me deliver the bad news, save the CHRO, uh, that's the way it goes. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, think about this, think about ways that you can do something different for your organization. Uh, you know, we think this is going to become much more common as we go. Uh, you know, and partner with an expert. Look for somebody that can help you, you know, that, that's going to think about some of these issues already. Uh, somebody that's got good partnership with, with attorneys that are in this space. Um, you know, there's several law firms that are doing a lot of work in this space already, and we work with them. Uh, you know, so I think that's the real key here is just, you know, doing your due diligence, and, and starting to talk about this with your leaders because it really is an important topic. Uh, you, know, you don't want to be like this manager, you know, this is, this is what happened during COVID. You know, somebody calls you and said, hey, you need you, you to come back to work. And guess what? I've moved. I'm, I'm living a thousand miles away. Well, employees are looking for, for a change, looking for something that's different. Uh, you don't want to be surprised because you're going to go somewhere else where this is offered to them. Make sure that you're also providing this to, to the employees too. Uh, questions? Thoughts? Yes. What is the industry that you're starting to see that are early adopters? Uh, I mean, the, the folks that are showing interest are, it's interesting, it's hospitals showing a lot of interest. Um, we've got a couple of financial services companies that are smaller, kind of, uh, you know, tax, tax referral, you know, or tax, tax firms that are starting to show interest. It's really more, um, those are the ones that are kind of driving it. Um, we're starting to talk a lot to, um, I would probably say more mid-sized organizations in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, we do a lot of a lot of work with with Bay Area firms, uh, primarily on the recruiting side, but they're starting to talk about this too. Um, so they're starting to see a need, uh, especially where it's just so hard to find talent. And a lot of the companies that we work with, because of the type of work that they do, they need to have people in the office. You know, so they got to be in the Bay Area. You know, so they can come in once or twice a week to, you know, to, to do work you know, on gear. One of our big clients is a, um, a GPS company. So it's really hard to do you know, GPS locator. And they do um, horizontal GPS as well as vertical GPS. So they can tell you where somebody is, not only in a building, but what story of the building they're in. So it's really kind of a cool, cool you know, technology. But they got to be there you know, to do the work, to do the testing. So, you know, we're having to, you know, find folks in the Bay Area. You know, so they're starting to, you know, to, to think about this also. So, yes.
Right, right. Well, it, it, and it's that whole, you know, it's no different than what employees are asking you today about where to invest their 401k. I mean, I've, I've had, you know, I've led open enrollment meetings and, you know, and employees will come to me and say, well, I want to invest in the 401k. Where do you think I should put it? It's like, well, you know, I'm not going to give you any financial advice, any tax advice. You know, you need to do your research and here's some places you can go. Um, we're starting to see a lot of employers starting to offer um, some of that coaching, you know, either through their 401k provider or through a financial services company so that they can try to get some independent advice. This would be no different. I mean, we would want employees to understand um, how risky the investment is um, and, you know, and what can happen, either on the positive side or on the negative side. I mean, the reality is, you know, four out of 10 of your employees are already invested in it. I think the number that's in our white paper is 36% of employees are already interested in this and being paid in crypto. Uh, probably 40% of your employees already have accounts in crypto, so they're already doing it anyway. Um, now it's just a matter of how do you try to make it more mainstream within your organization. Uh, but also, you want to have some you know, guardrails on what percent of their pay you'll transfer into a exchange. At, you know, if they want to put the other 80%, that, they can very well do that. But as far that's kind of their call. As far as kind of what you'll help them with is maybe the first 20 uh, and, and try to do it that way is what we're recommending. Yes. So um, my question is around regulation, um, and more, more so compliance on the HR side. I've worked for several uh, startups, crypto startups, um, established companies mm -hmm. that have find it difficult to offer this incentive primarily because it increases their compliance costs. Right. Yeah. 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 On 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 the compliance side, um, the attorneys that we've talked to, and again, um, you know, these are, you know, good sized firms out of New York that are doing a lot of work in crypto. Um, you know, the the key that they're saying is, you know process payroll as you would any other payroll through your vendor and then whatever you know whatever is the net then allow employees on the net side to contribute you know into a, an exchange in cryptocurrency so it's it's really it you know you're you're taking care of state requirements you know federal you know deductions all of that stuff on the on the before you even start talking about any any contribution into cryptocurrency uh, you know, from a compliance perspective, you know, what they're telling us is as long as we can document the employee agreed to it, they agreed to a certain percentage, um, and this is the amount, um, that should be sufficient from a compliance perspective as long as you're doing it after you, you, you do all of the deductions. I mean, what you don't want to get into a situation where folks are getting, you know, starting to pay into cryptocurrency pre-tax or, or any of those kinds of things because you know, then, it, then you become responsible for, you know, well, what was the value of the crypto before taxes? What's it valued now? And I, I mean, that then becomes very, very challenging to figure out that spread. And, and, and you, as an employer, you don't want to be in, in that business. You really want to do it kind of post, you know, post all of those deductions taking place. Uh, you know, but our, you know, our attorneys, you know, that we've been talking to and consulting with uh, really re recommend um, that we do it that way and, and limiting the, you know, the, from a compliance perspective, you're going to still have to report, you know, uh, you know deductions and all those things as, as normal. Uh, but the real key is making sure the employees know kind of what they're getting into. And that's the tough part. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, I... I from my perspective, I would think some of the, you know, some of the firms that are kind of working in this space, 
really need to try to figure out a way to do it for their employees uh, because you know it, it, I think it's a it's a great way to you know to you know to to kind of be leading you know, from the front you know in that area yes Of what now? Of which one? Besting. Besting. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I the what seems, you know, I guess there's probably, you know, four or five currencies that are probably the most popular. That seems to be the area where most folks are kind of investing. There's a ton of, I think there's 19,000 cryptocurrencies out there now or some to that effect. You know, so I think, uh, you know, the ones that we're seeing that are the most common uh, are probably you know, five to ten that are kind of leading the pack. Um, you know, and, but again, it becomes up to the employee where they want to invest. I mean, you know, we're not going to tell you you have to put your 20% in Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or any of those. Uh, it's really kind of up to the employee on, on, on making those decisions. Uh, so that was one. On the second question around vesting, uh, the the organization that we're working with, with nurses and paying their signing bonuses in crypto. Um, so in the example that I gave, um, you know, they're going to be paying about thirty thousand dollars of a signing bonus to a, to an RN. Um, it's a two-year requirement to get the full thirty thousand dollars. Fifty percent vests after one year, fifty percent after the other year, and basically what we're going to do is track the value of that $30,000 in Bitcoin over that two-year horizon. Oh, and by the way, if, if you only make it to a year, you're only going to get $15,000. You're not going to get the, the value of your cryptocurrency. The only way you get the value is at the end of the two years. So that's the 50% the, the investing that we're talking about. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, I, I uh, as far as kind of mixing, you know, equity programs with 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 uh, cryptocurrency, you know, I think organ I mean organizations have a hard enough time just keeping track of their equity program uh, and how much you give in RSUs versus options, that, you know, that, that's, that hasn't, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, I think really the focus now is um, how do you, you know, pay employees um, you know, with cryptocurrency um, as a way to attract and retain your talent. Uh, and uh, you know, you know, as part of an overall strategy, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things you have to do also that are that, that are required, uh, you know, to keep to attract folks. This is just one of those one of the, uh, yeah, an, another way to do it too, to offer. Yep, good. Yes. Uh, financial downsides. We don't see any financial downsides uh, as long as you know, kind of you follow the right process. Um, and as long as the employees understand that, you know, uh, yeah, that there's a risk there. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure about you guys, but I've had lots of run-ins with crazy ass employees. Uh, <laughs> and this isn't gonna guarantee that you're not gonna have a, you know, a crazy ass employee situation. But, um, you know, the, 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 as long as you kind of do it and people know going in, that there's a risk there, but there's also reward. Um, that's really the key, is just that, that communication piece. Uh, and, you know, and we're, you know, big proponents of, you know, of doing a, you know, kind of over communicating, uh, you know, and doing it in different ways, you know, uh, you know, doing it, you know, via a Zoom call, you know, v via email, you know, doing, you know, video snippets. I mean, there's a lot of ways that employees can consume information 
this would be one of those, you know, ongoing uh, communication challenges that you have to have to kind of work through. Yes. Uh, you know, it's really, you know, the, the only benefit, employees can do that now, like you said. Uh, the only benefit is, you know, getting them, uh, as soon as you get paid, the money's transferred. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, from a convenience factor, you know, not that nobody is lazy, but, you know, it's just a, it's a convenience factor, and it's a way to provide that as an additional, you know, benefit to employees. Um, also, you know, from what we're in talking to some of the exchanges, I think if you do it this way too, uh, you can you know, hopefully avoid some of the some of those fees, uh, and hopefully employees will have more, you know, more dollars to change into cryptocurrency than if they were do it, doing it by themselves. So it's a convenience, and hopefully, get them a little bit of the spread, help them with the spread. Yep, exactly. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I guess on the one hand, it is like, why wouldn't I just use ten dollars to help you? Right? I mean, as opposed to then investing it for you, because I don't think most companies are well maybe sure after sure they can put an account in, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and I the what we're say, what we're saying is, or our, our approach is today, you know, most of your payroll providers can will will send money to various accounts. You know, you can send money to you know two or three accounts. We view this not no different than that. Uh, we view this instead of sending it to Fidelity, you're sending it to Coinbase or to, or to another exchange where you can then invest you know, based on, on, on your level of risk. Uh, and again, everybody is different. What somebody may want to do, you know, one person versus another. Uh, the reality is they're doing it today. All, all we're saying is, you know, this is just another option to put in your portfolio of, of benefits for employees that somebody else may not be offering and could make it make your organization a little bit more stickier than somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And Yeah. Yeah, and and whether you use a dollar amount that they choose or a percentage of their of their total pay, you know, that's kind of, you know, each organization can make that decision. Uh, but, yeah, but you're right. I mean, it, it's just an, a, another way to, to provide, you know, a, a different approach of pay for folks. And, and they're, they're out there doing it today. I mean, that, that's the other part of it, too, is, um, you know, so many of our employees, you know, have accounts, are, are active in this market, um, and, you know, you know, this is just another way to say, okay, we know you're doing it. Maybe we can help you, you know, reduce your cost by doing it individually 
versus this larger organization. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we, the uh, it, it's interesting because uh, the way the U.S. regulations are written, uh, you know, as far as pay is concerned, uh, it basically, you know, they basically say that you've got to pay employees um, in, you know, some type of recognized currency, U.S. currency, and unfortunately, you know, that you know, cryptocurrency can be. It's a currency, but it's not, you know, is it recognized, is it not recognized? So there's a big gray area there. So a lot of the attorneys that we're working with are basically saying, look, you really don't want to go there and pay everything, you know, in crypto. Uh, you really, you know, because you can run into some of those huge problems where, you know, $5,000, we pay you in crypto, and all of a sudden, you know, something happens, markets go bad. You know, and now I can't pay my rent, you know, because, you know, my account has gone down. Uh, so to avoid some of those challenges, the recommendation is to do it kind of post, do it in, as part of your net salary after the deductions. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh in in the example the only way that the nurse gets the full value of the cryptocurrency is if, if, it, if they stay there for the full two years. But is she getting $1,000 in two years or $1,000 today's $1,000? They're getting, in two years, they're getting today's $1,000 that they purchased in crypto, the value of it uh, you know, at the end of two years. Yeah. Yeah. to the person once, once they complete their two years, in that example, exactly. Yeah, in that example, the, the hospital, the hospital's gonna buy the equivalent of $30,000 of it for today for that employee, kind of in, in, in their name, um, and the only way that they earn it is at the end of the two year window. Yep. That's what you're, you're vesting in the crypto, correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. The employee will get, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it, it, the only way that we do that is if you're buying it over month to month to month. But that, but in this case, it's a, yeah. Yeah, in this case, it's a kind of one-time purchase at, at data higher. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, well, good. But, yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're just about ready to release a white paper. So, you know, if you'd like a, a copy of it, let me know. Uh, or if you'd like a copy of the, of the presentation, 
got my cards up here. I'm available. Give me your contact info. We'll we'll uh, we'll send it to you. But uh, thanks for thanks for coming over. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs>